So as you can see, our personal information quadrant has been completed and now we can move forward to the next section. So now we're going to be working on our supporting information quadrant. So you'll see in the supporting information section that only one thing is required and that's the educational opportunity program section. So once you click on that, you'll get information regarding the educational opportunity program. So definitely take the time to read more about it and click on the EOP admission site to learn more about the program, the eligibility criteria, and view the application deadlines. After familiarizing yourself with the program, you'll be asked, are you currently enrolled in an EOPNS program? You can go ahead and answer accordingly. Next, it's going to ask you, do you wish to apply to the Educational Opportunity Program? If you wish to apply to EOP, feel free to click Yes. Once you click Yes, more questions will populate. These questions include if you've previously attended a Cal State, if you've participated in any of the following educational programs, whether it was in high school or in community college. It'll ask you for your family's information, including financial information. And lastly, there's an important reminder here letting students know um, that they can submit their Cal State application before submitting their EOP responses, so long as they meet the EOP application deadline. So these are questions that you need to answer if you went ahead and selected yes. However, if you select yes, that you do wish to apply to EOP, but that you'll return later to complete these EOP responses, you'll notice that the questions disappear. What this means is that you can go ahead and move forward with your application and even submit it and later work on the EOP questions. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and click yes, just so that I can walk you through the rest of the EOP application questions. If you're not interested in being a part of the Educational Opportunity Program, you can go ahead and select no, click save and continue, and you can move on with the rest of your application. So after filling out those questions, and after I click save and continue, it'll move me on to the next section of the EOP application. You'll notice here to the left that now we have um, three other sections that we need to work on. So the first question that we see here is asking us once again if we're going to go ahead and continue with the EOP application or if we want to return later to complete the questions. Again, I'm going to go ahead and click yes just to walk you through um, the following questions. In this section, it would be very helpful to speak with your parent or guardian to make sure that you provide accurate information. You'll see that um, first we have to enter parent guardian information. Next, we have to provide financial information regarding our parents or guardians for both 2020 and 2019. It will also ask you if you're independent of your parental support. I went ahead and clicked yes here just so that you can see the kinds of questions that it's going to ask you. Some of these questions include how many years you've been living apart from your parents um, and what your total income is for 2020 and 2019. And now in the next section, again, it's going to ask you the same question first on whether or not you want to continue with the EOP application. Um, if you select no, this is pretty much where it's going to stop and you'll be able to move forward with the rest of the application. Um, but again, I'm going to go ahead and click yes, just so that I can walk you through the following questions. These questions are a set of biographical questions regarding um, your economic background, for example, um, your personal goals for why you want to go to college, what your motivations are, um, questions about your academic background, questions regarding your extracurricular activities and involvement inside and outside of campus, um, and any additional information that you would like to share with the program. Please note that each question requires a response of a maximum of 2,500 characters, so try to be as concise as possible. Please be sure to take your time to read these questions and really think about the responses that you're providing, that they're not just simple yes or no responses, um, but that you actually take the time to respond to each and every one of these questions. There's one more important thing that I'd like to bring to your attention. 
after a certain amount of time has passed, this account will actually automatically log out. The only problem is that students often don't know that this has happened until they click save and continue. And when they do this, instead of continuing on to the next section, it'll take them back to the login page. And oftentimes the student will have completed a majority of their responses. They took, you know, several minutes, maybe even up to hours working on their responses only to find out that they were logged out and that that information was not saved. So to avoid this really unfortunate and inconvenient situation, I highly recommend that instead of working on your responses in this page, open up a Google Doc and work on your responses there. Once it's completed, you can go ahead, copy and paste those responses to this section and save and continue. In the last section of your EOP application, you will be asked to include EOP letters of recommendation. EOP requires two recommendations. One of these recommendations must be from an academic counselor or teacher that can comment on your academic preparedness for university academic work. The second recommendation can be from an individual who can comment on your potential to succeed in college. So this could be another counselor, another teacher, perhaps a community member or an employer. Please note that family member recommendations are not accepted. A very important tip is to provide your recommender at least two weeks to work on your recommendation. For example, if your EOP application is due July 16th, then you wanna make sure that you ask your recommender on July 1st to give them enough time to work on their letter of recommendation. When you're providing the recommender information, please be sure that the information is up to date and accurate. So it's going to ask you to provide the EOP deadline. As I mentioned before, in the first section, there is a link that gives you information about the EOP application as well as the deadlines. Um, every Cal State has a different EOP deadline, so please be sure to provide the correct deadline in this section. If you're applying to more than one Cal State, uh, let's say, for example, you're applying to Cal State LA and uh, Cal State San Bernardino, and the EOP deadline for Cal State LA is December 31st, but the EOP deadline for San Bernardino is January 15th, you want to go ahead and provide the earliest deadline. So you're going to go ahead and provide Cal State LA's deadline because theirs is due sooner and you want to make sure that the letter of recommendation gets to Cal State LA on time. The following question is going to ask um, whether or not you waive your right to access this recommendation. So if you do want access to the recommendation at a later point in time to see what your recommender wrote about you, you can go ahead and click no, I do not waive my right. Um, but if you want to go ahead and waive your right, you can go ahead and say yes. That is definitely completely up to you. When you add your recommender information and save it, it will take you back to the main part of the EOP recommendation section. You will then have the opportunity to check on the status of that recommendation. If you take a look at this, um, the status right now is requested. So what that means is that your request has been sent. Um, and later down the line, if that changes, once it's accepted, um, it'll say accepted. Once it's submitted, it'll say submitted. So this is your way of keeping track of that recommendation. It also allows you to send reminders at a later point in time once the recommendation request is accepted. Um, so this is another way that you can maintain communication with the recommender and continue to send them reminders. So now that this section is complete, I can go ahead and click on my application. And now we'll see that these two quadrants are complete. 